Hi beautiful people, thank you for tuning in. My name is Lucy and uh, today we are going to talk about uh, Food from the Wild by Ian Burroughs. Just in case you would like to uh, buy it or borrow it from the library so you know what to expect. This is Ian. Unfortunately, Ian sadly passed away in 2009, but hopefully this book will continue to inspire wild food enthusiasts just like you for many years to come. And uh, he was obsessed by nature from uh, early childhood. What can you expect? So the book is split uh, into fruit, uh, nuts and seeds, flowers, greens and vegetables, herbs, roots, whole plants, seaweed, uh, fungi and uh, lichens. And uh, let me show you. So this section always start, let's say, with fruit. Uh, you've got a bit of a wording uh, about fruit. Uh, sometimes he mentions here what uh, it's really uh, useful or what was uh, really used in the past and it's not that common. So he gives you uh, good suggestions and uh, here you've got the pictures. And uh, I would say it's uh, sort of the same as in most uh, foraging books. So you've got the dimensions, uh, you've got the occurrence when you can uh, forage it, um, size and description, habitat and distribution, and uh, also tips for harvesting and use. The next one are nuts and seeds. So this is what it looks like. It's funny between between the trees we've got the poppy seeds here as well. Then we've got the flowers. So you have a sneak peek into flowers. We've got the greens and vegetables. So I believe you recognize a few of them already. What I find really useful is the whole plant uh, section. So basically you can use the whole plant, you can use the roots, the seeds, uh, leaves and stuff like that. So this one is, was quite uh, handy. So this is what uh, is in the whole plant section. And the uh, interesting one was the reed maize. I am thinking maybe I could grow it here uh, in my garden. Last year, or a couple of years ago, I can't remember exactly now, I bought uh, half of a whiskey barrel. Basically, I have it as a garden pond. So I was thinking maybe I can buy another one and grow reed maize there, who knows? Because uh, what he mentioned, uh, reed maize, although arguably the most productive and useful plant in this book, remains uncultivated and unused except by a few pioneering individuals. Surely this is a food crop for the future. So who knows? Let me know. Then we've got the seaweeds and uh, there is quite a big section for mushrooms. So if you are a mushroom enthusiast, uh, you will like this section. You can see the descriptions, the differences and we've got You've got loads of them here, so my favorite one, Horn of Plenty, the one I haven't met yet, but uh, I believe my time will come. And yeah, you can pick your favorite one. As I said, yes, this is a big section. And uh, as I mentioned before, every single book uh, gives me like uh, new ideas, what I can forage. And uh, also I was quite uh, 
please to find out. I've got a heather in my garden and uh, I didn't know I could make a tea from the flowers. So next time I'm gonna... Here it is. I'm sure uh, you might have some in your garden as well. Next time I can dry some flowers. So it's blooming at the moment. So yes, and uh, I also bought uh, the hydrator. I haven't tried it yet, so it should be quite nice. And uh, also I'm thinking uh, maybe put uh, some flowers into honey. It makes uh, excellent honey. So yes, the floor is yours. I hope you enjoy it. If you'd like to give it a go. If you like this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up, uh, share with your friends and family, spread some love. Don't forget uh, to hit the subscribe button. And uh, that's all from me, from my heart to your heart. Stay amazing. Bye until next time.